here's why the Bitcoin halving is not priced in. You can see here across time in each of the post halving periods, we've seen dramatic increases towards the upside in Bitcoin's price action. We're going to be talking about these phases in a lot of detail. So let's dive right into it. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward and let's dive right into it. You can see here in 2012, November 2012 is when the halving event took place. And you can see that post halving trend continuation in parabolic fashion followed after that halving event. Same can be said about the 2016 halving, which took place in July 2016 around the pre-halving retrace. So we see that there is a pullback around this time, but that is a means to an end in enabling a drastic trend continuation in parabolic fashion towards the upside. Same thing for 2020. You can see here the pre-halving retrace, which was of course also enabled by the pandemic in March 2020, May 2020 is when the halving event occurred. And we also have the April 2024 halving just ahead, two months away at this point in the cycle. And we're probably gonna also see a pre-halving retrace as well, but still it's always gonna be ending with a parabolic rally towards the upside. What's interesting about these charts here is that we see parabolic increases by $5 at a time on this scale here in this cycle, four years later, as is the case with every halving event, every four years, we see increases in by $400 towards the upside. And over here, you see the increases by $4,000 and right over here, you have increases by $20,000, which just showcases to you the difference across years, not so much the difference in the pattern itself, because we have a parabolic bull market followed by a bear market consolidation and bottoming out and then parabolic uptrending. And this is the case in every cycle, bull market, bear market, bottoming out, and then parabolic continuation bull market, bear market, and this was your consolidation year in 2019, which is part of the bottoming out process, but it was more volatile in that case, but still ending in parabolic price continuation towards the upside in parabolic fashion. Here the same thing, bull market, bear market, bottoming out period, and now we're ready for that final phase where we're going to see trend continuation towards the upside, towards new all-time highs in the post-halving period. So the halving isn't priced in. We also see that the scales are drastically changing across cycles where what we thought was impossible in the past so if we look at the 2012 cycle and you have the increases by $5 at a time, this is what we thought was impossible at the time because if you look at this uh, price region where things were in the cents or even the single dollars, increasing by $5 at a time was impossible. And what you're seeing here in 2016 on the other hand is increases by $200, $400 at a time that was also impossible. And the same principle applies here, increases by $4,000 at a time. Also in this cycle was impossible. In 2020, it just happened. So when we're talking about increases by $4,000, that's now, that was the impossible in 2020. What's going to be the case now? What's going to be the case in this cycle? Maybe these increases by $20,000, $10,000, that's something we've not really had before. Maybe it's something we need to set ourselves up for because if you're just focusing on the post-halving parabolic price period, that's simply what awaits. The halving isn't priced in. And looking at these periods in the past, especially the phases of the Bitcoin halving, we can really learn a lot from these phases just to try and time these moments where potentially we could see that pre-halving retrace, for instance. If we do see a pre-halving retrace, and like I was mentioning to you in the previous chart that we saw pre-halving retrace around the halving event, we had the same thing in 2016 as well. These are the final moments for a bargain buying opportunity before that parabolic price continuation. Of course, the first chart doesn't showcase these phases too well, 
it showcases, of course, this parabolic phase very, very well. But we have to also look at the minutia of the Bitcoin halving cycle, specifically the pre-halving period, which we're currently seeing right now, the pre-halving rally in light blue. Currently seeing, or at least will be seeing in the next few weeks, definitely a pre-halving retrace, that last pre-halving retrace in the pre-halving period before we see the reaccumulation period. And just a note about the pre-halving retrace is that it begins before the halving, but continues across the halving event and even post halving. So calling it a pre-halving retrace is partially correct, but it does draw out for several weeks. And so expecting something similar in the future is reasonable, especially since we got a 20% pre-halving retrace in 2020, a 40% retrace in 2016, but we'll be talking about each of these phases as we go through them and breaking them down into more detail. But this is the reaccumulation period where the pre-halving retrace transitions us into. It takes us into a period of consolidation for even months at a time. If you think about this red period as one consolidation range, even though there were two consolidation ranges, and if you focus on the top of this range here, that's actually the bottom of this range right over here. So you have two ranges develop into what is essentially a, a larger reaccumulation range that also awaits. And these are the sort of pit stops that will take us to the most parabolic phase in the cycle, which is the post halving parabolic upside phase. And that awaits in just a few months. It's several months after the halving where we see parabolic rallying towards the upside. And thinking about 400,000, that seems a little bit far-fetched, doesn't it? If we think about things, but if of course, of course, if we're just comparing it to these charts here side by side, you can really get away with putting even 600 or 700,000 here for engagement purposes. But of course, this is a chart I found in the in internet and I think if you were to just change the scales to maybe have 200,000 over here, the effect would be the same, but it wouldn't be as catchy perhaps. But that's something to also consider that maybe 100,000, 200,000, that's where we should be potentially aiming in this cycle. Of course, everybody is going to be talking about the ETFs and about the halving. But it's interesting because when price is going up, everybody talks about the ETF and the halving. When price is going down, people talk about the halving being priced in and ETFs already not really translating into price. But the reality is that if we look at the gold ETF, after many years, once that gold ETF was launched, we saw mad, just mad and fantastic price action towards the upside and the market grew, the market cap grew exponentially. So the thing, with Bitcoin is going to be the same. We're going to see these double catalysts really impact price in this parabolic upside period, but this is going to occur many months after the halving because historically we tend to see that this reaccumulation period can even last up to several months, even 150 days, five months roughly speaking. So that's something we also really need to take into account. And we're just about two months away from the halving, history is repeating itself in a sense that the pre-halving rally has begun two months before the halving. That is history repeating itself quite nicely. Now that we're less than two months away from the halving, we still have multiple weeks left in this pre-halving rally according to history, and we can still see a bit more upside, if not upside, at the very least reaccumulation at highs before we transition into that pre-halving retrace period, a handful of weeks before the halving. So maybe mid-March, late March, closer to April. It's late March, early April, so that it's just before the halving because we tend to see buy the hype, sell the rumor, uh, price action and psychology play out around this pre-halving retrace. So we'll definitely see the same in the future. As long as history repeats, and at the moment, this cycle has been following closely history, particularly the 2016 cycle, where we are seeing 
and have seen in the past in 2016, we saw many reaccumulation ranges develop and we're seeing that same sort of structure, bring Bitcoin reaccumulation range by reaccumulation range by reaccumulation range to newer highs each time. Lots to look forward to. The post halving period isn't too far away, but at the moment we still have a couple of phases left. The pre halving rally, the last pre halving retrace and the reaccumulation post halving. In any case, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. Check out the top right hand corner video for more. Like this video if you enjoyed this one and I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak to you soon.